Dear confreres, Afomandi, Ali associates, collaborators, missionaries, and the entire Redemptress family. Greetings to each of you as we celebrate the day for consecrated life on the feast of the presentation of the Lord in the temple. The Lord Jesus, who is the light to the nations. On this day, Father Rogerio Gomez, our Superior General, and the entire General Council offer you the first communicanda for this sexennium, 2022 to 2028, entitled, You are the light of the world, our consecrated life at the service of the mission of the Redeemer. This first communicanda on consecrated life today is an instrument which we hope will enable us to revitalize our Vita Apostolica. The purpose of this communicanda, which is the fruit of the reflection of the entire General Council, emerges as a result of the special situation that we are experiencing as a congregation today. The process of restructuring and reconfiguration, the search for our identity, the reflection on the Redemptorist consecrated life highlighted by the 26th General Chapter, the decline in vocations, the large number of those conferences leaving the congregation and the constant request for incarnation into the diocesan clergy. These phenomena are experienced not only within our congregation, but also in the wider context of the church and of consecrated life itself. All of this in the reality of a changing world, where the lack of credibility of the church and the discouragement of many conferences is evident. Thus, this change of epoch demands from us commitment and courage. Faced with this world, perhaps we feel like the flame of a torch that blows in the wind, refusing to be extinguished, and yet struggles to fulfill its task to illuminate and warm. What are the winds that try to extinguish our light? Where does the energy of our light come from to resist the storms of this world? This communicanda is not meant to give precise answers to all our concerns, but rather is a provocation and an exhortation to each confrere to allow his heart to burn, Luke 24, 32, and to be encouraged to seek his first love, Revelation 2, 4. It is an invitation to each confrere to recover that enthusiasm for his vocation and the joy of being a redemptorist missionary. At the same time, to search for the light of the Redeemer and to recognize the good that his light does as a consecrated redemptorist missionary forming one missionary body, constitution number two. This is an invitation to encounter, to listen to one another, to pray personally and in community, to discern and to revitalize one's vocation. It is most importantly an exhortation to follow the Redeemer, to renew our desire for Him and to be enthusiastic about one's consecration and mission in order to go forward with perseverance until the very end. Yes, indeed, it is worthwhile to be a Redemptress missionary today. At the very core of this communicanda is naturally the Redeemer himself, who is the light of the world. The Redeemer illuminating us with his light says to us today as an encouragement for our apostolic life. You are the light of the world. A city on a hilltop cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, that it may give light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before all that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. It is very significant that this text is found after the Beatitudes as it fits perfectly with the call to each of us as missionaries of light and hope. Therefore, 
Dear Confres, you are the light of the world. You are blessed. As long as you have the light, believe in the light that you may be children of light. John 12, 36. Our question is, where is your light? Where is the light of your community? Where is the light of your province, vice province, region, mission? Where is the light of the congregation? How can we communicate the beatitudes of the Lord with our light? This communicanda is divided into five parts. First, we begin with a reflection on the Redeemer himself, who is our light and from whom we draw our light, who called each of us and set us afire with the flame of his love that sends us out to radiate the very same flame of his love. In the second section, we reflect on the light that withstands storms. We acknowledge the many storms and the darkness of this world that test our faith and our light and constantly try to extinguish them. Some of these shadows and storms are self-referentiality, individualism, lack of commitment to community life and mission, a lack of interest in one's own personal formation and what is proper to the congregation and the community, lack of availability for missionary service, a bourgeois lifestyle, personal projects justified as the mission of the congregation, prejudices against the culture of the other, the lack of fraternity, the absence of prayer and of the cultivation of redemptorist spirituality and mysticism. A variety of abuses, unfortunately, abuses of power, sexual, economic, psychological, of conscience. Then contempt for an alienation from the poor and above all clericalism. In the face of these shadows, we can only allow the light of the Redeemer to penetrate these realities and to transform them in order that we may be credible before the world today. In the third section, we reflect briefly on the parable of the virgins in Matthew 25, 1 to 13. This parable enables us to ask an important question of ourselves. Does redemptress consecrated life have enough oil and light to read the signs of the times with fortitude today. The next section, number four, is a call to examine the various lamps that we need as Redemptorists so that we can be attentive to the hour, to the time, to the coming of the Redeemer. These lamps of prudence are the light of our witness of life, the light of our missionary availability, the light of our simplicity of life, the evangelical councils, the light of our humanity, and the light of service to the most abandoned. In the fifth and final section of this communicanda, entitled, Questions for our Redemptorist Consecrated Life, and in the light of the text of Matthew 5, 14 to 16, which we read, we propose some questions that will guide us in a personal, and community way to reflect on the power of our light. These questions can be themes for the monthly personal and community retreat. They could help us to make a conscious and serene review of life, an examination of conscience, and also serve as a way of educating our consciences about our redemptorist consecrated life, so as to make our light shine brightly from our conversion of heart, of our mentality, and of our attitudes. We, as General Counsel, wholeheartedly ask major and local superiors to encourage conferences to set aside a time to pray about their redemptorist vocation, to renew and review their journey as consecrated men, and to reflect on our consecrated life and mission in today's world. This will help us to be more aware of who we are and whom we serve. These themes taken up here with questions for reflection, along with important texts from the scriptures, 
from our redemptive spirituality and from recent papal documents are aspects central to our Vita Apostolica, such as initial and ongoing formation, mission and missionary availability, restructuring for mission, the service of leadership for mission, lay faithful associated with our mission, especially the young, the vocation of the Redemptorist brother, and finally, spirituality as the fount of our light. In conclusion, we wish to emphasize that Redemptorist consecrated life is not dead. It is a flame that shines brightly, resisting the storms. The lack of vocation, the lack of credibility in the church, the indifference in today's world, the difficulty of responding to the new problems of today, the internal and community fragmentation, and our own lack of witness. But the light that shines in us is that of the Redeemer. Therefore, even if we have our contradictions, it will not be extinguished. What we should never do is to hide this divine light, lest it disturb us and we become children of darkness. 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5 and John 8.12. Conference, Redemptorist religious life is worth the effort. To each of you, dear Conference, who is a ray of light contributing from your Redemptorist being and work, thank you. Thank you very much for your generous yes. We wish you courage in your vocation and perseverance. We invite you to share with our young people the beauty of your vocation and missionary enthusiasm. Keep ever in yourself the living flame of the Redeemer who will always give you the gift of missionary ardor. So, Dear Conference, take up this communicanda with fervor for your reflection, prayer, sharing, discussion, and celebration of our Redemptorist consecrated life. Finally, thank you, dear Conference, for the gift of your consecration. Thank you, dear Formandi, for your desire, search, and discernment to be a Redemptorist missionary. And thank you to the lay associates in our mission, to the Oblitz and to the whole Redemptorist family for being a stimulating, evangelizing, joyful and enlightening presence in our mission. May our saints, blessed, martyrs and venerables, together with the Mother of God, our Mother Perpetual Help, help us to be missionaries of hope in the footsteps of the Redeemer, to embrace the future with hope in our congregation, renewed by the light of the Spirit and by the missionary availability manifested by each conference. On behalf of Father Rogerio Gomez, our Superior General, and the entire General Council, I wish you a wonderful day of celebration of our consecrated life and an enthusiastic reading reflecting on the communicanda on consecrated life. Many blessings from the General Curia in Rome.